Good morning. I don't remember if I told you this or not. I think I did, but um, I try to go by your traditions when I'm here, and I know you're used to your other priests genuflect at the altar, and uh, over the, uh, about a little over a month ago, I had some minor knee surgery, and genuflecting is just not in my repertoire right now. So that's um, in case you're wondering why I do things differently. I know people always notice everything. And so uh, that's, that's what's going on. Today as we pray our official Mass intention, we remember David Stanfell. Let's pray for him, the repose of his soul, and for all of our needs as we come together in God's name. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of the Lord our God, the love of Jesus, the fellowship that is ours in the Holy Spirit be with each of you. And as we gather in God's name, we seek forgiveness for the times that we have sinned. You are the source of everything that is good. Lord, have mercy. You come to be with us this very day to strengthen us that we also might grow in holiness. Christ, have mercy. mercy. You will come again in power at the end of time with salvation for all of your people. Lord, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent word to Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos has conspired against you here within Israel. The country cannot endure all his words. For this is what Amos says, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be exiled from its land. To Amos, Amaziah said, Off with you, visionary, flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is a king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Now hear the word of the Lord. You say, prophesy not against Israel, preach not against the house of Isaac. Now thus says the Lord, your wife shall be made a harlot in the city and your sons and daughters shall fall by the sword. Your land shall be divided by measuring line and you yourself shall die in an unclean land. Israel shall be exiled far from its land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, the judgments of the Lord are true and all of them are just. The judgments of the Lord are true and all of them are just. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. 
The ordinance of the Lord are true, all of them just. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. The, the judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After entering a boat, Jesus made the crossing and came into his own town. There, people brought to him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Courage, child. Your sins are forgiven. At that, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Jesus knew what they were thinking and said, Why do you harbor evil thoughts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. He rose and went home. When the crowds saw this, they were struck with awe, and they glorified God who had given such authority to men. The Gospel of the Lord. The man and his friends in the gospel had a strong faith. They didn't let anything stop them. It was also an active faith. They did something with it. They didn't just keep it up here. They didn't just think about it. It was an active faith, and it moved them to do something. And they brought their friend, the paralyzed man, to Jesus. And then, what a surprise. They came, remember, because they wanted this paralyzed man to be able to walk. And what does Jesus say? Your sins are forgiven. Wow, that wasn't what they came for. It was, uh, why was he saying this? Well, we can't be sure. The gospel doesn't, doesn't lay out all the details for us. But I would suspect it was because this paralyzed man was not only paralyzed in his legs and couldn't walk, but he was probably paralyzed in his heart also with bitterness about his condition, with anger and frustration that he was left in this bad state. And so Jesus, it seems, sees that there is a deeper problem than not being able to walk. And he meets that deeper need. And then he throws in the physical cure as an extra. After all, if we think about why Jesus came to earth to live among us, it wasn't to be a, a doctor who was going to cure us of our illnesses. He did that as, as a sign of who, he was, of who he was and just a sign of his internal goodness. 
But the main reason he came was to bring the good news of salvation. That we could be freed of the things that bind us inside. The things that keep us from a real enjoyment of life. So today as we hear him speak in the gospel and see him, hear him, see him act, he's telling us to keep our eyes on what's most important. He doesn't say we shouldn't be concerned about the other things either. We should. But remember, we need to keep our eyes on the prize. Let's stand as we pray. We pray that we might always be focused on the most important thing, eternal life with our God. For this, let us pray to the Lord. And that our church might be a sign of God's presence, always calling us to this deeper, great truth. We pray to the Lord. We pray also for our earthly needs, for those who suffer from physical ills as the man in the gospel that they may know the comfort of Jesus and may be touched in some way by his healing power, we pray to the Lord. And for the poor and the homeless, for refugees throughout the world, that they may find peace in their own lands and the things that they need to survive in a healthy life, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all in service to our country, whether that be in the military, as first responders, those who serve in any way, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all of our dead, especially those who have died in this epidemic that is upon us, that they may know your comfort and your eternal love in your kingdom in heaven, we pray to the Lord. We pause for a moment in silence as we call to mind all of the individual needs that we have brought with us to this Mass today. Pray for each of these needs, we pray to the Lord. And Lord God, we thank you for your promise to be with us in all things. Help us to recognize your presence at work in these needs which we entrust to you now in the name of Jesus, the one who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We pray, my brothers and sisters, that these, our gifts, may be pleasing and acceptable to our God. O oh God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that, we may, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but they profit us for our salvation. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy. <coughs> <clears throat> full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. <clears throat> in giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Pray together for the fullness of God's kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. Only may you say the word. Let us stand and pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go now in the peace and the love of Jesus Christ. <laughs>